do 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 and do 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 there we go all right guys you know the deal blah 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 wait a little bit blah blah then we'll get started blah I'm not going to wait too much longer. There's one watcher already, so I know a couple of you will jump on after the fact. Good enough. Alright guys, tonight we've got ourselves another case of Star Wars Last Jedi Series 2. Break is sponsored by Blowout Cards. Thank you to them. So with this product, we are, you know, it's a little lower printed, so things are kind of stacked up. Got a little smush on the box there, but that should be fine. We'll do this one first. Drop that down so you can see. We'll back this up. Just, uh, oh, here, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Good luck to everybody. Let's see how we do. I know in particular there is a... Uh, I mean, I get to it this way so I can see the parallels. I don't remember all the different inserts and such. Uh, so anyway different format than what we usually do this one's been cut down to a lot less spaces so you know it's a more expensive break but the value obviously all right I'm, I'm putting these things in I'm splitting these up way too much I'll just because I forgot there's like 10 different insert sets so obviously due to the less spots it's uh, uh, that's a I don't know uh, that's a gold no I think that's the bronze it's numbered out of 99 I forget uh, that's the one of the that's probably the biggest thing about this that I don't like this this product is that that it had the same colors of insert sets but uh, you know what I mean by colors I mean the parallels but then they're numbered differently and, uh, not this one. so the base reds Yeah, you know, I forget exactly how it went, but you know they they weren't numbered. But then the insert reds were numbered out of 99, and then the you know the blues were 
a different numbering. You know, blues aren't numbered, but then if you got a blue insert, it was numbered. Not sure why they didn't just keep them all the same. That's that 10% off card. I did like the fact that they did that instead of making it just a picture of some packs. So nobody wants to chat tonight. Continuity, uh, purple. Ah, there you are. You know, I hate starting off hot because it just makes everything else a letdown. Second here. Sorry, I gotta click off of this for a sec. Back, go back, go back. Okay. I remember that skit you were talking about. There's a one of these patches. And it's just a Poe, just a base patch. Nothing, nothing to write home about. No. I don't remember exactly how it went, but you know, it was like, all right, if I had a wish, I would wish for all the children in the world to sing together in unison or something. And then he goes, well, if I had two wishes, I'd wish for, uh, you know, whatever it was, like, you know, a million dollars, and and then and then that kid thing, and then if I had three wishes, it was. Well, hoping we do better than that. All right, so character poster. So one thing I remember now that I'm opening them from when we did it when it first came out that there's so many different things yeah I always meant to look it up I keep forgetting but this just reminded me is he did a guest spot on I want to say it was Letterman and I, I I thought it was hilarious. It was this thing where he was like, uh, all right, two of these. So all right, so this one is an actual. Just to make it hard to tell, so this I think is an actual gold. It's numbered out of fifty. But um, he he goes to to ladder me. He goes, I want to show you a new magic trick. And all he does is he, he takes the deck of cards and he just, he just, you know, does the thing where you go, you know, not fanning them, but, you know, whatever you, whatever you call that. And, uh, and then, so that's it. So, that's that one. And he said, you know, I'm still learning it. I hope you guys, could you see it? Because maybe you play it back in slow motion. And then they play it back in slow motion. And it shows him like pulling cards out, pulling out a, a, a tape dispenser, and he's 
cutting them up and putting flags on them and doing all kinds of stupid stuff but I thought it was pretty funny Five packs left. Still waiting for our sketch or autograph. Jeez, down the two packs. All right, so we start ourselves off with Veronica Nago. I always forget how you pronounce that. This is a base autograph. I'm just going to try and remember if, uh, if that was the stack I did last, if there's any sort of uh, a, um, uh, oh hell, I'm brain fart, the collation if it's in, you know, the packs in the same spot in each box, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I did uh, submit the a break for um, the Galactic Files, so we'll see what happens. Looks like we got another patch here. Yep, and that might be gold. C3PO, so I'm not sure. And yep, 15 to 25. Just because I had a free minute, I also submitted uh, Masterworks. I know that one, people are actually waiting for I was told in general to not you know try and keep the breaks to stuff that's you know 45 days out or 
uh, closer. So that's why I've been asked a couple of times now for um, uh, that one goes there for um, the finest and the what's the other one that's coming out? Finest and I got Galactic Files uh, Galaxy, right? You know, uh, something funny, do you read all the different threads when they pop up about, you know, they uh, caught a pack searcher at, you know, Target or whatever, or just, you know, pack searching in general? doing some cleaning and uh, I was trying to find some pictures and at the bottom of a box of photo albums I found this paper that kind of jogged my memory that apparently back in the early 90s I was a pack searcher and uh, see, so that's a ray continuity well, I'll show you when this box is finished. But I feel like if I remember correctly, I like mailed, you know, like a couple of bucks. You know, this probably was cash too because of how long ago it was. To some, I want to say somebody had an ad like in SCD or something like that. And uh, so I got this list and it tells you how to find the packs, like what is uh here's one of the silvers numbered out of 25 i think that's the first one of those and it even has non-sports on this uh paper too but i, I didn't really collect non-sports back in the early 90s too much except for my 95 marvel metal metal set Oh, I forgot to put a link. Nah, not yet. I'm, this is just the second box. It was uh, Veronica Nago or whatever it is in the first box. I completely forgot to put the link up. Ah, jeez. Sorry about that. Uh, 
Yeah, that one's a parallel. Oh, that's where I was going to... I forget if I said the inserts were base and parallel. All right, so next up we got the Big Bird Lady. Amanda Lawrence. This is a base autograph. boxes down and thank you for reminding me about that Jake I'm going to put that link in right now So I don't know if you just got in here, Jake. So I was just telling JD here that you're not going to be able to read it, but this paper right here, I found this in, in a box. And I remember this thing. I had had to mail a couple of bucks into some guy. I think he had an ad in Sports Collector's Digest. And it's got on here how to find the packs that had the big cards in them. So it turns out that I was a pack searcher back in the early 90s. Couldn't tell you if it worked or not, because I don't, honestly, I don't remember using it. Alright, so the first two boxes, the, uh, the autograph has been that pack right there. And then the patch, I think, was in the bottom of this row. When, when I get a free moment, all that free time I have, I'm gonna post a, I'm gonna post that up in the, on blowout. Hopefully we're just getting all the duds out early. This is a base version. I keep saying that I should probably go to the checklist here real quick. Oh, let me just. Yeah, bronze is to 99. I kept saying bronze, but I figured I should make sure I'm using the correct ones. Of course I do. And I'm sorry, of course I did. And it's funny you say that because 
I do my damnedest to not have an accent. And since if you grew up in Voorhees, I don't say water. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I bounced around a little bit. I am originally from Winslow Township, and then I moved to Evesham, and then Blackwood, and then Hamilton, which is where I'm currently at, which is just a little outside of Atlantic City. Hopefully, that's a break continuity. There's that thing. Where in Voorhees did you live, Jake? Matter of fact, that's where I just was tonight. And I hope you're right, JD. We just get all these patches done early. And then the last boxes are just all sketches and autographs. So that knocked that. It was the second to the bottom pack, unless I uh, mixed my rows up. Or this is one of the. Usually, wasn't there always a box that had an extra hit in it? Uh, that was a parallel, but the parallels of the inserts, I'll, I'll get them, I'll sort them out later. Well, the Echelon Mall is a shell of what it used to be. They, uh, they tore half of the mall down a bunch of years ago. And they actually built apartments. That goes there. Whoop, that's an old pile. That one goes on that pile. But the, the road that leads to the mall, there's, you know, apartments and townhouses and condominiums all up and down. And so, you know, not knowing exactly where you uh, live, a lot of it's still there. So it very well could still be there. All right. So base autograph. Kieran Shah. All right, three boxes in, three base autographs.
at the uh, the Echelon Mall. That was my stomping ground when I was a kid. That's where we all that's where we all went to hang out. All right, so now just because I'm going to take the second to last pack out of each row. Now that that one didn't look thick, but if I remember correctly, they did a good job of hiding the patches. Uh, they will. They have to. I mean, even just parallels alone. That's a bronze. Will be better. So, Jake, how long ago did you move out of New Jersey? Don't worry, JD. We're just getting rid of the the bad boxes first. It's got to be what it is. I don't blame you. I wish I could get out of uh, <laughs> this area, but I'm not sure how old you were when you uh, when you moved out, but um, or if you're familiar with some of the other towns. But my wife is from the town that we live in, and it's kind of this sort of like a black hole where if you're from this town, you kind of stay in this town. They don't they don't go anywhere. That was another one of the Ray Continuity cards. Pretty sure I'm older than you, Jake. So uh, we probably never crossed paths in uh, at the mall.
Oh, got our first sketch. It is a die cut. Oh Lord. You're definitely younger than me. But the uh, but the echelon mall that was, <laughs> it was funny too because I was just having this discussion with somebody when uh, when I was in in '89 so I, I would have just gotten my driver's license and uh, it was always you had all the malls in the area and you're, I mean you're gonna remember the, the area well enough but it was uh, the echelon mall is where we always went to hang out. Because that was sketch number two. Because that was the place to hang out. And then it was the Deptford Mall. That's where you went if you wanted to have your car stolen. The Cherry Hill Mall is where all the snobs were. There's our... Oh, jeez. Well, at least it's a parallel. But it's a double autograph. The Hamilton Mall wasn't built yet. I think that opened in 1990. And then the Morristown Mall is where you went if you actually wanted to shop because nobody ever went to that mall. Alright, and that's an actual gold. I hate the fact that the bronze and the gold are almost identical. So this is card 12, numbered 1 of 10. So that's good. All right, well, we'll start with our autograph. This is the red Veronica Nago, or whatever, however you pronounce that. I'm going to do the die cut sketch first. Stylized. This is uh, Frank Kadar. Funky on the colors, very clean line work on it. And oh itch. And then our full size sketch. Yeah, I've seen better. Nah, not really. I'm just kidding. So this is uh BB8 and this is Carlos Caballero. Mondays, the that was the one. Oh God, what was that guy's name? Bill? Did that sound right? It was over on uh, Choose Landing Road, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Card stores are almost non-existent around here yeah definitely I tell you Carlos Caballero has really been uh, putting out some quality quality work all right and just because even though it only half worked here second to last pack in each row gonna take it out
the uh, the one near the Berlin Circle is still there. And the funny thing is, he well, he built a store. Um, it was called uh, Brad's Extra Innings. And he I swear he has the exact... If you went in that store tomorrow, it's the same stuff that was in there the last time you were in there 18 years ago. I, I really, I don't know how that guy stays open. But I just, I don't find myself opening up cards at all anymore. And I mean personally. Obviously I open up a lot of cards. Yeah, he, um, you know, again, not sure, you know, since you're, you're not, you know, around here all the time anymore. Uh, that goes here. So I'm guessing that's actually a no. That's a bronze. Uh, that goes there. But the Berlin Circle is no more. They uh, it's now it's this crazy convoluted crisscross of roads and traffic lights. But um, yeah. He, the, he used to be in a little shopping center right on 73 and then just right around the corner in between the Berlin Circle and Route 30 uh, he built a standalone little store I'll go in there if I'm if I need uh, supplies if I'm short on those because he usually has a good selection of supplies I actually, I really miss, uh, there, there's a lot of comic book stores, but not, I need ones that are a combination of comic books and cards, because then they'll actually have non-sports stuff. Yeah, it, it's a it is really a mess that the what what they did to that circle. I mean, it took me a while to get used to it, but I am now. But I mean, since you know where that is, I I live. Uh, I'll say I'm yeah, just about twenty minutes south of of the circle. I still call it the circle. Never gonna not be. Still there, still <laughs> old and nasty, but that's the way we like it. Yeah, if the weather's nice and uh, uh, bronze, if the weather's nice and we don't have anything going on, I'll me and the kids will go and walk around outside on the weekends. Look at all the junk. You still would have been around. You know who had a really good store? Was, uh, oh God, what was that one called? Do you remember there was one in the circle? Like there's that, there was that shopping center. And, oh, what was that one called? I am drawing a total blank. But that guy, he had a pretty good layout. 
from back in like the early to mid 90s he used to have uh, trade nights that he I think he passed away I want to say he had gotten like throat cancer or something because I remember he used to be a cigar smoker continuity purple yeah. all right so we'll start with this one so if we have a patch it would be in this pack I think maybe not autograph eh, boo and then that's a silver yeah uh, silver is back here Yep, that's that's the one. I, I can't I'm drawing a blank on what the name of the store was. Uh, that's a base patch, a red. All right, so then that means these two should have nothing in them, unless it's another three uh, three hit box. Now that guy wasn't the original owner, but uh, whoever was it had first opened that place. I remember they used to have, he had all these murals, like baseball murals painted on the wall. And it would always have like old, like games playing in the background. Alright, so we got ourselves a Luke Skywalker base patch. And that goes there. And let's see, what one did we get here? Base, Dave Chapman, BB-8. Now this is box six. So, so far, we've had four dud boxes. And one good box. You know, now the funny thing there is if you if you remember those stores and going in those stores, even back then, if you ever were in there and went to the trade nights or pack wars or any of that kind of stuff, back in, you know, the early to mid-90s, then, oh no, you said you were born in 89, so, no, never mind. Uh, right here. So I feel like I, I stopped going to that place. I remember being there when uh, when the home run races were going on, so that was like 95. Because you always have the games on on the TV. Now, 
Uh, let's see here. So far, I'll have to type for him. He said he can't turn on the volume. Uh, I'm not going to have time to type out what we got so far, but except for the two sketches, I mean, the autographs have been nothing. There's a silver. See now, JD, don't you wish you lived uh, in South Jersey? Reminisce with us. Continuity and a purple. Yeah, I want to say I stopped collecting sports in '98. Actually, I stopped collecting altogether. I was uh, I was pretty well out of it for a while, and then when uh, 2007. Marvel Masterpieces, when I Upper Deck put that out, that, that brought me back in. And, uh, and also then Rittenhouse DC Legacy, I saw that. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention to you guys. Anybody watching or listening can listen to me right now. Uh... You guys see the thread about like holy grail sketches or just tough sketches in general? I think they're still, I don't think they ended yet, but uh, I was contemplating put it, throwing a bit out there. DC Legacy, the 2007, um, somebody's got, this is a gold, I think. Somebody's got uh, a Perna and three Martinex ending tonight. So, it's DC, it's not Marvel. So, I know some of you guys are Marvel guys. But, uh, the Perna is uh, of the Riddler. And then the Martinex, there's a Brainiac, Aquaman, and uh, Mr. Freeze, maybe? can't remember who the third one is. But, Perna sketches... In general, especially the old ones, they're really hard to come by because I know I tried putting together a master set of that and I was maybe like five five or nine sketches short, not counting the archive box guys. And Perna was one of them. And he was it was just impossible to find. Is that a sticker? Okay. Looked like it had a slightly different color, but stickers don't have any parallels. But last that I saw them, they were uh, in the 50s range. Okay, we got ourselves. Let's see what's this number two. Four of ten. So this is the uh, prop caretaker. Kind of looks like a basket. The fabric piece that's in there, but so I guess that's a gold. Come on, focus. There it goes. Oh, it doesn't. I guess they're just numbered what they're numbered. I know we, uh, the only other, we had pulled the, uh, what was it, Praetorian Guard in Series 1? Felt like that was a much higher number, like out of 50 or something. Red. 
Purdue. And I also thought that those don't count as a hit. So do we have two more in here? Man, I'm sorry, JD. We are getting killed on these autographs. You answered him. Thank you. Well, I guess the source cards are counted as a hit. I thought they weren't. Base autograph, Ian White. Got to at least get one good autograph out of this thing. Uh, oh, you got your volume up. Yeah, one, uh, a red auto of Veronica Nago. That's how you pronounce it. And that's it. So we're hoping that all the good stuff autograph-wise is just, <laughs> just further down the case here. I am pulling out the second-to-last pack in each row because that's the hits have always been in the second-to-last pack. Uh, we got one of the boxes had two sketches in an autograph. There was a die cut sketch of Frank Kadar, or by Frank Kadar, and then a Carlos Caballero, which that sketch is awesome. Um, no printing plate yet. I know they're not guaranteed, but it seemed like we'd get one of those in every... That was just a red of uh, one of the inserts. The Caballero sketch you want to see? Okay. Uh, let me just get these packs out of the way, and then I will go. I'll grab it. different piles here. I'm losing track of what goes where. I'm just going to end up having to reorganize it all after the fact. Continuity.
And that's a bronze. got a uh, just so you can see it because I, I do like the look of these so this is the um, the what is it the heroes or the heroes of the resistance insert and that's the gold version and uh, four of ten a couple of those different colored inserts on the uh, but those backgrounds are like that splash. It kind of makes a nice contrast. All right, we're gonna go with uh, this one first because it probably has a patch. If you want. Alright, uh, base patch Ensign Pamage Nero Good. This is our um, seventh box that we're just about finished. It's, uh, what's this girl's name? Hermione Corfield. It's a base autograph. And just real quick for you here. This was the die cut Frank Kadar sketch. This is the Carlos Caballero sketch of BB-8. just to do things a little differently for this one box for, all, for the superstitious one out there JD not saying any names we're going to do the four packs first so this feels like uh, oh, this might be a printing plate all right so we got a printing plate So 
So this is a black Ian White autograph printing plate. So at least it's an autograph printing plate. Is she back there? Yeah. And then a sketch. Not a fan of these. Uh, Robert. Doesn't look like Henderson. Uh, it's longer than that. But it's a pretty basic sketch. It is Hendrickson? Okay. It looked a little longer than that to me. So that should be it. You know. Now you guys get to watch me open up a bunch of packs of nothing. And, uh, to go back to your previous thing there, Jake, about the the DC, a premium DC set. Um, I, I feel like I said, I might have mentioned something to George again about that. But I don't, uh, I honestly, I don't remember. Sometimes I feel like when I when I uh, send the messages and stuff, you know, you can't understand somebody's tone or, you know, like when I'm, you know, I would be joking about it and I don't know if he understands it. Yeah, you know, I honestly, I don't, I never bothered to look up exactly what his title is. He's the guy, he is the one that goes to any, any big show. If there's Cryptozoic is set up, it's him. So I, I don't know, you know, like I said, exactly what his title is. Here's another gold first order stormtrooper. I know there's been other golds mixed in here. But from talking to him, I mean, I'm almost positive that he has input in the creation of the of the products. You 
And you're a little far away to go to the one in Allentown. I wouldn't drive more than two hours. If it was more than two hours, I wouldn't I wouldn't be going to the Philly show. He even sets up at the National. He was there. Personally, I, I, I wouldn't do it, but it's a lot easier for me to say because I collect so little. And non-sports is so small, you know, so for all, for all I know in the non-sport world, that's an enormous show, but to me, it's not that big. I go mostly because I, you know, I see a lot of the people that I deal with on here and, you know, it's kind of just go to do something. About an hour and 45 minutes away, so to me it's, you know, it's worth the drive to go there and enjoy the day. I'm trying to think how actually, how large is the show? JD, you want me to do the same thing again? Open the hits first. How about I mix it up? But when you get to the show, I'm trying to think. So there's usually uh, like four to six artists there. Cryptozoic is set up, obviously. They always, you know, give away promos. And they've had giveaways the last couple of shows. Um... I'm just, I'm just trying to get a gauge in my head how many like dealers actually set up. Base patch of BB-8. We opened up the other case and we got the uh, the Andy Circus plate. I feel like I could have sworn that that counted as an extra hit, or maybe I'm just thinking of a, a regular printing plate.
go for one of these now. That was not the hit pack. You know, JD, sometimes I feel like I haven't gotten a good Star Wars case since, like, 2012 Masterworks. All right, hey, it was 2000, or was it 2014? When did Masterworks first come out? I mean, I, actually, I thought we did pretty good with the 2000, was it 2016 high tech? Is that where we ended up going through like 12 cases? And we got everybody except for Ford. Ugh. It's not getting any better. Red, Ian White, 12 of 99. So that's uh, three Ian Whites. The regular, the red, and the printing plate. Uh, a base BB-8 patch was the other hit in that box. Hold on. Oh. Sketch. Oh, that was a second to last pack. I wasn't even paying attention. And it's that. Now that actually means, if that was there, I think that means there's going to not be a, uh, doing this upside down. Not going to be a patch. Here is a second sketch. The 
But that first year of Masterworks, that I remember doing really well with. Had gotten a, a redemption for a gold frame, James Earl Jones. We pulled a Carrie Fisher. I think I had gotten an Anthony Daniels. Uh, I still remember it was a. It was a Charles Hall sketch and it was a second sketch. Uh, who was it? Can't remember now off the top of my head. That was a, no, that's a bronze. Never pulled a pen relic, and I don't think I ever pulled a book sketch. Maybe, maybe this time around I'll be allowed to break uh, Stellar. Probably not, but I can hope. At least then I know what's in it. Uh, that was a red parallel. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be a good autograph. No autograph in this pack. That was just a regular there. Just well, technically right now it's not a hot box. I haven't gotten to where the third hit should be. I'll do. I'll at least do this. There is an autograph in there. Did not look to see who it was. It's a base autograph. Pretty sure. Now they were in two separate packs. I've def I've seen that before where the sketches are stuck together. Especially if you, you know, you get like a Glebe or something where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, paint. One thing, and all the stuff I've opened, I've never pulled a Harrison Ford, though. I know it's super rare. Alright, let's 
And it, like I said, it looked like a base autograph. And it is, and it's nobody special. <sighs> base autograph of Crystal Clark. And we'll start with Kayla Croft. Second sketch, a little bit more colorful. And Omar Salinas. Two more boxes to try and uh, hit something here. Right now, that Caballero is the number one card out of this case. Bronze of an insert. Now, let me just... Uh, I mean, this is definitely a patch. I can, I can you can feel it. the the pack has no flex to it at all. And is that a gold two of twenty five first order stormtrooper? Big deal. Just figured I'd get that out of the way. That's a bronze. Well, the cards are all spun around in this one pack, but nothing there. I hope that isn't the case either. At least in the first case of this that we opened, the uh, the printing plate autograph was. Um, there might be a printing plate in here. Oh, this is that. It's got that card in it. Never mind. Pack felt a little weird. It's because it has an extra card in it. But our our printing plate autograph was Andy Circus, so that wasn't that bad of a thing.
Ray continuity. Thought I had a die cut sketch there for a second because it's a die cut of EV8. I think those uh I think those auctions are ending. I think that's my notification because I had them saved in my watch list. Well they haven't moved yet price wise, they're still all in the fifties. If anybody likes some rare DC legacy sketches, I was gonna bid, but Changed my mind. So now I'm just curious what they're going to go for. I'm sure there'll be a jump at the end like there usually is. Base autograph, Adrian Edmondson. I am holding out. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, JD, but I am holding out zero hope in this last box. I mean, we honestly haven't had one good autograph. I mean, the Hermione is a, is a good autograph only because she's a cute girl. I know you were hoping for an autograph. I mean, you can't, you can't knock that BB-8 sketch. I mean, that's, 
That's a great sketch. I mean, that easily is the, the number one pick. I lose track of who's in what break. Did you see the sketch that I pulled of his out of the Star Trek case opened up last week? It's uh, he did it of uh, McCoy. Oh no, I'm sorry. He did the uh, uh, Sally Kellerman. There's a sketch. It's an all right sketch. At least that means we don't get a patch in this last one. That was a nice sketch. And then the, the one I was thinking of is uh, Louise Draper. She's the one that did McCoy. That sketch is insane. When I get to the pack with the autograph in it, I'm afraid to look. Getting close. Everybody cross their fingers. I'm looking. We want a Harrison Ford. If we all close our eyes and click our heels together three times and wish really hard. That is a gold. Why am I putting it there? It's one thing I, I just... A gold card and it's a gold parallel.
<laughs> Don't need positive thoughts. special and blue and that at least it wasn't a base and we got uh, I don't even know what I think this is silver it's numbered out of 25 Paul Casey Well, that was a total bust of autographs. And a thin sketch by Xiao Song Xiong. Well, I am sorry, guys, that that case didn't exactly go as we would hoped. Alright, let's do the recap. In the autographs, let's separate the base and the parallels. Alright, Ian White, black printing plate autograph. And then a silver Paul Casey, a red Ian White, and a red... Veronica Nago base autographs Veronica Nago Amanda Lawrence Kieran Shaw Dave Chapman Ian White Hermione Corfield Crystal Clark and Adrian Edmondson Sketches did a little bit better there Xiao Song uh, Omar Salinas Kayla Croft or Kraft, Robert Hendrickson, and our two best sketches, a die cut Frank Kadar and a BB-8 sketch by Carlos Caballero. Um, in regards to all the different stuff, the color, I couldn't tell you. We got, you get a ton of color in this stuff, so I'm just going to have to sort it all out, and I'm not going to know. Oh, we did get the, the prop, source prop of a caretaker, uh, numbered out of 10. And patches are patches, so who cares? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to try and start scanning, but it's late for me. So I will get the scans up, and I'll start sorting them. I'll start sorting them tomorrow, you know, all the, uh, the different color. And, uh, and then we could start picking. So thanks, guys, again, and I will see you on the next break.